Good evening. My name is Dewan Nelson and I will be your moderator for this class. Welcome to another lecture given by the members of the Southfield Michigan class. This is a school and not a church and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his internal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. <clears throat> we hold classes in the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. The Southfield, Michigan class was established in 1997. The Dean of the Southfield, Michigan class is Dr. Marvin Lewis, and the president is Dr. Edward Ewell. The vice president, Dr. Ron Atkins. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word, or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. <clears throat> Excuse me. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifest in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul filled with the Holy Spirit tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means Elohim is the title that our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in any good dictionary or encyclopedia will prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characteristics or letters in their alphabet that will produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our father and his son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit. And in this state, he is the incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state symbolized on this chart as a clown. Yahweh is not a clown. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in this pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form could only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also at this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe, 
It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, holy place, and court round bound. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern, and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The primary constitutional objectives and aims are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstitions, skepticisms, and ignorance. Six, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seven, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth, to earnestly contend, excuse me, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. And ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained, there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And 10, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the New York State. Our watchword is peace. Our slogan, speak the truth. We will now have a prayer by Sister Alexis Hamilton, followed by scripture reading. One second. Matthew, the 24th chapter by Dr. Lauren Lewis. Dr. Hamilton. Good evening, class. Uh, Good evening. Let us bow our hearts and minds for a moment of prayer. So we want to thank you, Yashua, for, you know, bringing us here today to continue to learn more about you. Um, please continue to feed us the truth so we can pass this word on to others in hopes that their souls will be saved as well. And um, please continue to guide us through these, you know, times. Um, and we pray to be raised into your body in the revelation of Yahshua the Messiah. And uh, let us all say hallelujah. 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 I'd like to say good evening to the class, and I'll be reading out of the King James Version, substituting the true names where appropriate. That's Matthew's, the 24th chapter. And Yahshua went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Yahshua said unto them, see ye not all these things, verily I say unto you. There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he said upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world. And Yahshua answered and said unto them, take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name saying, I am the Messiah and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. 
for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there should be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whosoever readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them they give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no nor ever shall be. And except those days shall be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say unto you, lo, here is the Messiah, or there, believe it not. For there shall rise false messiahs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning come down, excuse me, excuse me, cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the son of man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branches yet tender and put it forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when you shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But of the day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the son of man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the son of man be. Then shall two be in the field. The one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. The one shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your master doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, 
For in such an hour as you think not the Son of Man cometh. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, who his master has made ruler over his household, to give him meat in due season? Blessed is that servant, whom his master, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, my master delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken. The master of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of. And he shall cut him asunder, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That was Matthew's the 24th chapter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And now I uh, want to say welcome again out to everyone, to our uh, returning brethren and visitors. Uh, I will now turn it over to uh, Dr. Dorian Lewis. All right, good afternoon again. Good evening again, class. All right, what we're doing today is a little different because there is no transcript yet for this particular uh, lecture. While I'm on that, I just want to acknowledge the transcribers that um, I want, I'm thankful to Yahweh for them because that's a lot of work. So uh, I knew we would eventually catch up to them. They're not just listening to what's being said and writing it down, but they also are trying to date these lectures by things that Dr. Kinley says and current events that he mentions. They're finding news articles and magazine articles. So the whole point is that's a lot of work. So um, uh, I'm just thankful that they're doing it at all. I know Dr. Rhonda Brazil is helping out too, so thank you. Um, but so we don't have a transcript for this, but uh, it's actually a lecture that is uh, as part of the 45 recently released lectures. It is, uh, 39 minutes and 44 seconds so we can listen to it and then do questions and answers i know also there may be some questions from sunday's class maybe maybe not but we'll take the rest of the class for that um i did a tried to do a synopsis which reminded me how much work the transcribers have to do so anyway uh this this lecture dr kenley's talking about things that we have been talking about for the past few classes anyway. So that's why I, just, I thought it was a good one to play. He talks about uh, false doctrines and uh, false teachers. He talks about the tricks that they do, almost like magic tricks and, you know, whatever, um, you know, raising from the dead and all that kind of stuff. He says, there's no trick. Uh, uh oh, can you guys still hear me? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, yes. Lori, text Felicia. She just logged in. I'm just the comments about to log me out. Uh, someone, somebody did. Uh, okay, so anyway, okay. he talks about there is no trick or trickery in this gospel. He gives examples of uh, tricks by the false prophets in his time. He says that raising a man from the dead physically won't do it now. The greater works that Yahshua spoke of is raising the man psychologically and spiritually. He says that we have been crystallized in the false doctrine from our birth, and it's a hard thing to get those satanic spirits out of our hearts and minds. We, we will never know the difference unless Yahweh comes along and tells someone. And he talks about discerning, which uh, has been a subject for us the last few classes. So I'm going to start playing this. Uh, it's a little muffled in the beginning. And it gets better as it goes. So we will start right now. Uh, as usual, turn it down and then uh, turn it up to your liking. All right, here we go. What's the point about the whole situation any way you go is the people's response yeah. to the gospel, mm -hmm. the reality of the mm -hmm. See, Now that's what is most important. Now, if you notice that Dr. she told you about the uh, uh, Mohammedans. Now, if you look in your history book, you would find that the Mohammedans uh, number around four uh, and a better million. Uh, in other words, the Roman Catholics 
they're supposed to be the greatest in number. No, I mean, they say supposed. Yeah. I said supposed. Yeah, they said supposed. Yeah. And uh, now then, you know, uh, the thought that's so important is this. Uh, we have sent our books all over the world. And now, Allah is the Mohammedan uh, deity. And they have there in Syria, you heard us talk about going overseas in 1967 and 1969. Uh, we do plans to go overseas. Now, all of these places that we spoke about, I want to let you know I'm familiar with it. Never last one. Okay. Although I have never, nobody has ever known me to go out of this country and go right. there, but I've been. Right. <laughs> That's right. Too wrong. Yes, sir. That's right. That's right. And the way it involved and uh, so forth and so on, you can read about me your about it. But now the most important thing is, is this. You see, is the die. Mm -hmm. Now, all these tricks and all that uh, they do over there, uh, Dr. George Washington Scott, who was a uh, possibility, I think I've heard me mention, uh, Dr. Gross knows him personally. He was assistant David. He used to travel with the American Archaeological Expeditionary Forces in foreign lands and countries. And the American Expeditionary Force was, he was with them when they dug up King Tarakan in Egypt. And he also went to this uh, mosque. Not the one that you got now, this is the, this is the new bill. And he told about how those priests performed uh, all these various different things about the sword and so forth and so on. And he said that he was a witness to it and uh, he had seen those things. But now here's what I want to tell you about that. Them tricks. Amen. Uh, 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 yeah, you punch, punch in, uh, uh, something right. through your own hand or something else like that. Uh, uh, they do all them things. <laughs> See, they know how to uh, go into uh, what you might call uh, a hypnotic state. I'll try to tell you in a That's way. Right. That's right. right. So you know what I'm oh. suggesting. Now those are true. You see, uh, and all I could say. Now there is big, which I don't know if you've ever heard me say anything about it before. There is big from India. See, uh, they, he come over in this country. See. Just like uh, this uh, uh, man that we had over here when we was in Hollywood. Uh, a star A star See, and uh, he went into this trance and they buried him, uh, put cotton in his nose and in his mouth and everywhere, and they buried him. See, uh, the doctor felt some pus, no pus, no nothing like that, and they buried him. And the Dodgers, and the Giants, I think it was, played baseball over his, over his uh, uh, dead body. They took him up, and then slowly, he called it the resurrection from the dead. Mm -hmm. And all these things, kind of things. And uh, so slowly, he come back to life. And now the kids do that. Mm -hmm. That's right. For tourists. Mm -hmm. See, and see they, they do it for tourists to perform these things. They thought how. Now, when it comes to this gospel, there's no trick in it. Not a bit. Right. Okay. But I have to tell you all of that in order to let you know that uh, people, when it comes right down to accepting this uh, truth. Now, this, uh, uh, he's a prince. <laughs> His name is, uh, of course, he always calls himself Adam the Bat. But over there in 
in the, the, the dead, right. that this moment, mm -hmm. that he himself has built, and the old one uh, is there too. But this is a strange thing that just went up in the desert almost uh, unnoticed, you see. And uh, we have documents and all those kind of things on it. Because I have it at the house, and Dr. Uh, Hanky says this book belongs to him. See. Now, the one that I have is later than this. You see, it tells you about uh, this man. He's supposed to be the deceiver. <laughs> see, and he believes in Allah. Mm -hmm. See, and uh, he's supposed to have uh, performed a whole lot of miracles. See, and uh, the people are looking that in this last seven years, or uh, last week of Daniel, for this deceiver, to appear on the earth plane. See? Now, if you notice, and I have Dr. Tran to read the 16th chapter of Revelation. Now, there's three involved in this, mm -hmm. not just one. See? But there's three. See? The beast, mm -hmm. the false prophet, and uh, what else? The frogs. That's right. Three unclean spirits. Yeah. Now that's a satanic trinity. Yeah. Right. You see? Yeah. Now, they're all involved in this. Right. And uh, now then, here's another thing. Now, they have been, I've been trying to tell you, you see, uh, the heaven was purged, and they come right out of heaven and right down through the dispensation to the age. Now, here's what's happening. <coughs> you see? Now, if you look in the 24th chapter of Matthew, you find there that from the time of this tribulation, see, on down until the revelation, mm -hmm. you see, why then there was to be a time, now listen to what I'm telling you, that had never been like that before in the history of the world. Suppose you find that in Matthew and read. Mm -hmm. See, now this is what's happening. Now this is what is happening. See, Yahweh is giving his ministry. See, from Pentecost, he's giving them power. And fact of the matter, he's in them preaching. And the other side of it, he's giving them more power right. than they've ever had uh, to demonstrate right. and to manifest. That's right. And the deception has become so keen. Mm -hmm. See? So awful king, yes. until it's hard for the people to right. know the difference between one thing and the that's other. That's right. right. Now that's true. Do you understand? Right. Now, we've often said to you, you see, that uh, Yahweh alone was giving me a vision and a revelation. He also gave me the uh, gift of healing. Mm -hmm. You see? Mm -hmm. Uh, no. Mm -hmm. And then we try to explain that to you. Mm -hmm. You see? Mm -hmm. And there is people sitting under the sound of my voice who have been healed of cancer and every other kind of thing. Right. That's right. See, been in the hospital and, right. uh, right. and everything is right. You understand what I'm talking That's about? Right. <laughs> you see? Now, let me say this to you. See? Healing the physical body. You understand? That is no good. That's right. That's right. Now, now. That's right. Now, Yahshua the Messiah said this to his disciples. You know he raised Lazarus from the dead. You would call that a mighty, stupendous miracle. See? Is that right? Right. Well, that's a, that, that, that's a minor thing. That's right. You see? Dead four days. You see? Well, now, look, you see, if he tells his disciples that greater things than he done shall they do. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, sir. Do you understand? Yeah, what could be any greater? Mm -hmm. There must be something nice. Yes. <laughs> you see? Yes, sir. Now, this is what we have tried our best to do. It back you in the Garden of Eden. See, it wasn't enough that the fruit on the tree wasn't pleasant to the eyes and so forth and so on. You see, it 
see. It wasn't that God we were fooled but the man. You understand? And he didn't know what the man was going to do. You see the point? Yeah. But the, the fact is that he told him not to touch it. That's right. Mm -hmm. Now when he touched it, see, I want you to see, he died instantaneously. Mm -hmm. See? Right. And his conscience. Right. His inner self, his inner man was big. And yet he walked around the other day. Uh -huh. right. mm -hmm. Now here's what I'm pointing out to. Mm -hmm. See? It won't be the healing of the physical body. You've got to go right back to that same place as of now. Right. See? Okay. To resurrect a man from the dead. Right. And to resurrect a man from the dead psychologically and spiritually mm -hmm. is far greater right. yes. than raising anybody right. from the yes. dead, irrespective and regardless of how long it been. That's right. right. That is the truth. Now that was the greatest thing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Indeed. That the disciples were to do. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Right. Now, if you can get in here and preach the truth mm -hmm. and get these people to see in their heart and in their mind and to believe, mm -hmm. yes. right. you That's understand? Right. Yes. And raise him out of all this religious corruption and yes. collusion yes. and all these old yes. hell-fired yes. satanic spirits, yes. you understand, yes. has crystallized yes. the yes. demise of the people with yes. and all these old erroneous doctrines. Yeah, yeah. You understand? That's preached by them over there, the Mohammedans, yeah. and also by the Roman Catholics, and by the Protestants. Yeah. That's a far greater thing. Yeah. Yeah. You can get all of that yeah. stuff out of it. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's the truth. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Yes, we've been crystallized in it. We've been from the from the first yeah. on up. That's right. Yeah. You understand? And that's a hard thing yeah. Yeah. to get to them. Uh, satanic yeah. spirits out of our hearts and out of our minds. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Yeah. It's just traditional, it's custom. Right. We're eroded, we're crystallized. Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah. And then Satan has blinded our minds. You see? We just don't understand. Now, when it comes down to what we have been trying our best to tell you, see, we want you to know what the purpose of Yahweh is in all of this thing that we're talking about. In the creation of the heaven and the earth, you understand? We want you to know his plan and his purpose. Where he comes from, where he's going to. You see, we want you to know what he created, but both good and bad. All right. You understand? Yeah. Negative and positive. Yeah. We want you to know that it was first in heaven and it's now coming down to the earth. Right. You want to attract your attention to the extent that you can stop. See? Yes. And look at what you've been taught yeah. and what you believed all your life. Right. Do you understand? Yes. And these satanic spirits, mm -hmm. and these deceivers. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. Now you'll never know unless Yahweh comes along yes. and shows to us. And trick. one thing he's not going to do, never did do it, and that's this to leave something open to question. Mm -hmm. Not a bit. Relative to his purpose. No. See? Then you don't know what it is. See? He ain't gonna give you no value to tell you nothing about it. Uh -huh. And then he sends you off to a burning inferno or send you to hell for it. Okay. Now that don't make no kind of sense. Right. Right, it's true. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. Uh -huh. That don't make no kind of sense. Uh, I was out to a thrift shop. I'm always out there too. <laughs> a thrift shop. And that guy that talked to you one night last week, I decided within myself when I got home, I said, I'm going to buy in the thrift shop, if I can find one, uh, one of these jigsaw puzzles. See? And I found one. I bought 
25 cents. Say, now, I said, now, I'm going to take this jigsaw puzzle. See, and show these people how, now, just like you see this picture here. See, now, if you cut a jigsaw, cut this up into a jigsaw puzzle. You see? And if you try to press that in the wrong place, it just don't fit. That's right. That's the truth. You see? Now, if you, now if, you, if you just try to press it, now here's a part of his eye, and you try to press it up in his hand. It just won't fit. See, now here's a finger, and you're trying to press it over that toe belt. See, it don't fit. It's not cut out that way. But when you put it together like it is, then you have the same picture in the puzzle that you have on the outside of the box. That's right. You see what I'm talking about? Now then that's what has to happen. That's the truth. You see, we have to show you by these, these doctors, these maps, and whatnot. And listen, you can't fool it. You see, you just can't do it. See? This point? Right. Why? Because we know how to put them first. That's right. See? Did you find that over there in, the, in Matthew? Yeah. Start the 21st verse and read. For then shall be great tribulation. Then shall be great tribulation. Such as was not since the beginning of the world. Such as was not since the beginning of the world. Now, since what? Since the beginning of the world. 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 Since the beginning all of them collectively speaking did not have the Holy Spirit. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Now that don't mean nobody back here didn't have them. That's no. See? Now that's not what we say. Mm -hmm. Now we say what we mean and mean what we say. Mm -hmm. See, Yahweh always has had somebody. Yes. Don't do always. All right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. In it the seventh from Adam. That's right. Mm -hmm. See? That's right. Mm -hmm. Of what is what's there, even down here. Right. Right. See? Okay. You understand? Okay. He spoke to Noah. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. Now that's long before Pentecost. Mm -hmm. right. Right. Do you see what I'm talking about? The, 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 the problem is it's Yahweh, see, choosing whomsoever he will. Now, you can't put yourself in. All right. Uh -huh. That's the truth. See? Uh -huh. And sending truth. that individual in the world, mm -hmm. you understand, mm -hmm. to tell the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's just like he chose whatever prophet he wanted. Yes. Yeah. Right. You understand? Yeah. Now, there was a whole lot of prophets. See, a lot of them were false. Right, right. And among them false, there was some truth. Yeah, that's right. That's true. You see, now I'm talking about before Pentecost. Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking about all down here. Mm -hmm. Never had, always had that somebody here. You see? In fact, if I would just change that story up a little bit. <laughs> And tell you the real thing. Right? You always have it around here. Right. All right. You All right. You see what I'm talking about? All right. <laughs> you, you do. Yeah, that's that's right. right. And not in as much so as that's true. See, that old boy has walked yeah. around here. Yeah. All the way down. Hey, now, now, that brings me to this. Read that, Dr. Hatton. I want you to open your books to the 12th chapter of Revelation. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Now then, there shall be great tribulation. Such as was not since the beginning of the world. She said, was not. Now here's why that is. You see? See, there never has been no time uh, since the beginning of the age. You understand? That Yahweh poured out his spirit on everybody. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. See? He had selected and chosen vessels back then. Right. Mm -hmm. You understand? All right. 
and then nobody else had it. That's right. Mm -hmm. right, there. That's mm -hmm. right. Moses and Enoch and yes. Abraham mm -hmm. and uh, Melchizedek. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. Now he now see here comes up another one. Now he's trying to be something. You understand? Mm -hmm. You see what I'm talking about? He's a false. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. You see? Now, what you as people on this earth plane have to do, now you have to do this. See, he's given you at, in this last day mm -hmm. an opportunity to judge. Yes. See, now you, you, you have an opportunity to be, to, 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 uh, to be giving you someone, mm -hmm. and now you have to accept the spirit. Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't do it, yes. since the tree. See, and since he's in that vessel mm -hmm. doing the preaching, mm -hmm. if you don't accept mm -hmm. the way he put it down, and you're going to take it away the devil, right. then you see you just done lost too far. That's right. right. That's right. See, so you have to have the ability right. to judge it. Yeah. Now, you're talking yeah. about nine planets. There's nine living gifts, mm -hmm. you see, and one of them is the discernment right. of the spirit. Yes. You have to discern what that yes. spirit is in that you don't be just be gullible. The most people of today, now this is the most people, see, for instance, in Roman Catholicism and also in Protestantism, I'm going to tell you something. See, they don't even know what's in the Bible. Right, that's right. That's true. See, they don't know the books of the Bible. I'm speaking to uh, the people collectively. Yes. And the majority of you all that have come in this place, right, right, right. they've heard the scriptures that they discussed and been to Sunday school and so forth and so on. Mm -hmm. You don't know where the book of Jeremiah was, you don't know where it is. Yes, you don't know where the book of Numbers is, you don't know where it's at in the Bible. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. You don't know what it's all about. That, 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 that's somebody's show. See, now you don't know. See, now Yahweh got to give you somebody yes. to straighten that thing out. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? Because there's all kinds of interpretations. Yeah. Now, they, I want to make this clear to you, too. See, he's got some, Yahweh, if they know listen, I'll get this straight. He's got some death. Yeah, uh -huh. And then devil stay in that book. Yeah, that's, oh, yeah. that's uh -huh. right. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. uh, that's right. He don't lift his finger off the line. That's right. You see? And that's how you get food. Mm -hmm. Them your chiefs and those are your leaders. Those are your instructors. Those are your, your teachers. You see? You got a thing on it in the book too. See? But I I tried to speak both ways. Yeah. I tried to speak of the the congregation collectively. Yes. See, then I tried to separate it and show you this. Mm -hmm. See? That the, the teachers, you understand, good and bad yeah. are the leaders of the people. You see? <laughs> Since Pentecost, see these devils? And look, I want you to know that Yahweh said he gave them power yes. to perform yes. this miracle. Right. Right. That's yeah. a miracle. Yeah. Yeah. Now, a miracle is something you don't understand yeah. because you don't know how it works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. You see? That's right. You get it? Yeah. <laughs> you see? Now, he can't do them things of himself, but he always gives him power. And right there on that score, he given it to, see, he didn't know the fellow, you see. And he's explaining to you and telling you what that is about. Right. He said, right. well, I haven't been raised that way. I don't, I, I, I'm brought up in the country. You see, now, just like this Allah stuff, you see. You see, now, here's Yahweh, now, that's correct, you see. Mm -hmm. God said, and if you get not, Muhammad's not going to sack it. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Now, if you just stop, see, as we try to show you all the time, mm -hmm. 
You see, if you just stop. Yeah. And we told to tell you this. Moses alone and by himself. But a devil will come along and he'll try to tell you he knows more about it than Moses and Yahweh and anybody else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they will. Even tell you don't believe Moses. Right. See, now here's why I would say he didn't believe Moses, though. See, he said that Moses the account says that the sun come in on the fourth day. Mm -hmm. See, and he said, I, I can't see that. See, I don't see how we can have vegetation. You see, vegetation penetrated the soil on the third day. See, we had Yahweh move the waters off the face of the earth. And let the dry land appear. There was a double operation on that day. We, we don't very seldom ever to get into this. Uh -huh. Not that way. There's a double operation on the third day, and there's a double operation on the sixth day. Uh -huh. okay. That's the double operation. You know, right. the sixth day, we have time, you just can't draw. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 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 You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. See? Now, then, what the sun, now you got the sun coming in on the fourth day in your agenda. Mm -hmm. Science said, I can't see how it can be like that. How are you going to grow vegetation without the light of the sun? And the warmth of the sun. Mm -hmm. Therefore, since the sun was on the fourth day and vegetation was on the third, they don't believe in Mosaic account. They didn't. Right. Now tell me what the opposition to it is. Well, then, if you don't know, yes. see, then you go on puzzled. Mm -hmm. yes. See, they tell you that the sun was first. Mm -hmm. See, then you go on puzzled. You see? Now, then, y'all are going to have to send somebody. Right. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. You see? I would prefer to say that another way. He did. He did. You see, he had to come himself. That's right. That's it. And explain it to you. Yeah. Well, that's it. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. See? Devil ain't fooled, you know. That's right. That's right. You see what I mean? Devil and y'all explained it to you. Mm -hmm. See, you heard it the other way so long. See, until you don't know about that. Mm -hmm. See, right. but at the point, I don't know about that. See, you just done crystallized and corroded schemes and traditions and customs and ideologies and opinions. Mm -hmm. You see now? Yes. You see that now? Yeah. Then, now the sun was first. Yes. But you see, here's what he did. He got his sons twisted. That's right. That's right. See, he's looking at the sun being put out here in the sky on the fourth day mm -hmm. instead of looking at the sun over here. That's right. The sun of righteousness. That's right. This sun created everything that did come from that. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You understand? Yeah. But he got one mixed up with the sin. This is that corporeal and this is physical. Yeah, that's right. Right. You see that now? So you have to know sure. something. Do you see that? Yeah. Now, since that revealed from Pentecost on down, I mean, all these things that were back here that, that they didn't know. Right. And Paul, in the, I think it's in the second chapter, repeat, said Yahweh hid them things in himself, yeah. which in other ages was not. Yeah. Was not, not made now, right. but is now manifested. That's why Messiah said, "All the things that He said to us, said when the temperature is calm, right. just turn the thing around and show you really what we're talking about." Yeah. Why is walking around here with them in the flesh just like I'm walking around here with yeah. you now? You understand? A whole lot of things is going to be said that you don't understand. Right. That's, That's what He's right. telling the disciples. Yes. You understand? But now when I quit walking around here, 
rip you and then get in yeah. and then you're on your dead. Yes, but I'll bring all that back to the and you see it with mine and now show it. Yeah, that's right. All right. <laughs> That's where it is. You see what I mean? That's the way it's got to be. Right? Then you can distinguish the difference between one thing and the other. Mm -hmm. You've got the revelation right quick. I, I, I have to, you're talking about me watching my watch. <laughs> see, you better get a bell or something. <laughs> oh, see, I, I, didn't, I didn't get up here to watch no watch. Yeah. I don't even have it on me. I just now found out watch on second day. I didn't even have it. <laughs> See? Home in the door. All right, read. First verse. Well, Captain, begin with the first verse. And the temple of Yahweh was open in heaven. And the temple of Yahweh was open in heaven. And there were seen in heaven. Now, look, John is seeing a vision. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. The twelfth captain. Now, I want to tell you what I'm after that. See? I'm after showing you where there was a war in heaven. Right? Yes. And John is seen. Yes. Being revealed to him in the spirit. Right? Mm -hmm. He's saying the temple was open in heaven. All right, read on. Mm -hmm. And there were lightning and voices and there were lightning and voices. And great hail. And great hail. And there appeared a great wonder. And there appeared a great wonder. A woman clothed a woman clothed with the sun. And the moon under her feet. And the moon under her feet. You see, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. You see, the woman clothed with the sun. Now, we've just done tried everything we know how. See, we, 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 we've done it. See, we first showed you that Yahweh was masculine and feminine. We told you that he was with a plural word. Yes. Is that right? Then we told you that Yahshua. See, he had a wife and a bride. Right. Mm -hmm. right. You understand? Know That's true. That's right. All right. That's right. I hear John in the spirit. He sees a woman clothed with the sun. Mm -hmm. Now, in order for him to manifest that thing down in the earth, mm -hmm. see, he got to bring forth that man Adam. Right. right. Mm -hmm. You see? Mm -hmm. That's right. And that woman has got to be in that sun. She's clothed with it. That's right. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See? Because mm -hmm. he's showing you what's in the end caught real. Yeah, yeah. But putting it down here on the earth plane. Right. And that gun stand. Okay. And Moses was the only man that saw that. Yes. In other words, Moses looked right at it. Created out. And consequently, he was the only one that could say that he was made in the life. The man was made in the likeness of him. Mm -hmm. But Moses was not that when he, when he really created. That's right. This is a, now, they give that told you about being on rerun. Now, Yahweh only has the power yes. to go back through something. Yes. You understand? This happened and occurred long time ago, and so it took a man step by step. Right. Right. All right. And that's what's happening up here in this month. Right. He's doing most of what he's doing. That's right. Mm -hmm. See, and when he gets this, he Moses is with us and create this man. And then he says, this man is in the light of the end of the fish. You see? Yeah. Then that guy, he said, the woman was clothed with the sun. That's right. Then he caused a deep stick to fall on the head yeah. and took the woman out of, her, of the man. Right. Took the rib and the wound. Yeah. You understand? And made it. Imagine, well, it looks like y'all have uh, 12 ribs on one side and, and uh, 11 on the other. Now, all that's the only bone in the body that'll grow back out. Yeah, yeah. Now, if you cut your leg off, you have to go to the hard way. Yeah, right. <laughs> and get your head gonna grow out. Right. I'll assure you of that. That's right. But a rib will. Right. All right. Is that all right, Doctor? Yeah, right there, right? <laughs> See? So then you got as many on one side as on the other. All right. Uh, read on. And she being with child cried, for them to birth, right. the pain to be delivered. See? And there appeared another one. There. See? Now you got it both ways. Mm -hmm. Now you know what I mean by both ways? You got the woman clothed with the sun. Mm -hmm. And now then you got the woman. She's pregnant. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. With the child. Yeah. See? Mm -hmm. Therefore, we tell you, the woman is of the man, and so also is the man. Yahshua the Messiah, right. born of the That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> John got the whole story. Mm -hmm. Read on. And there appeared another wonder. See, now he's saying about these wonders. Read on. And behold, a great red dragon. And behold, a great red dragon. Having seven heads and ten Having arms. seven heads. Now, don't you see the seven days here? Uh -huh. Seven uh -huh. days in a week. Uh -huh. See? Seven thunders, yeah. seven stars, mm -hmm. seven. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I mean? Seven, seven right. heads. Complete right. Having seven heads. In a foreign country, see, where they expected some great mammal or something to rise about. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? Pardon. See, with these <laughs> seven heads, that's that drag on its feet. See, I ain't got time to go into all of it. But uh, read on, Doc. And his tail drew a third part of the And his tail drew the third part. Now, what he's really talking about, just cat talking about casting out those dead. That's right. You see? Yeah. See? Now they've got to come right straight through these seven angels. Uh -huh. And got to come start right here in the garden of Eden. Right. And it's got to come on down. Right, uh, uh, right on down, right past where we live. Mm -hmm. Manifested in these creatures and all, mm -hmm. and their satanic powers. Now you understand? And all the corruption and the idolatry, the ignorance, the superstition, and the tradition which you have been taught all your life. Mm -hmm. And it's hard for you to do that. Right. You see? Now, how? She, somebody scratched their heads out of And a lot of the smart boys, college bred, say, I don't understand revelation. It's more simple than look in the right. Why? Well, because it's explained what's been revealed. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's what John is telling you about. Mm -hmm. All right, read. And there was war in heaven. And now look, there was war in heaven. Uh, you see that now? Mm -hmm. There was war in heaven. Mm -hmm. All right. Michael and his angels. Michael and his angels. Oh, the dragon. Paul and his angels. Yeah, see? Now, here's what I want you to see now. Mm -hmm. You see, if you could just once get it into your thick skull, you see, that them satanic uh, angelic spirits was first in heaven. Right. You see? Mm -hmm. And did you notice that his tail drew the third part mm -hmm. of the stars from heaven? Mm -hmm. Now, who do you know that can give you any, well, let's say a good guess about how many stars there are there in the sky? You see? It's an innumerable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And his tail drew the third part of the stars from heaven. Mm -hmm. Is that right? right? The third part of it now. Yeah. Now, why third? <laughs> you see? I want to know why third. Do you know? Well, then somebody will have to tell you if you don't know. Right. Right. See? Three thirds equals a whole. Is that almost right? right. Just like you thought, just, just like you thought something here on the board. All right, everyone. I'm sorry I forgot to mention that before we started. This is not a complete lecture. And uh, also, um, a couple, uh, probably months ago now, uh, Dr. George Light had a question about, uh, I, can't, I can't remember exactly how he said it, but I think it was something about, um, was there anyone who knew the purpose of Yahweh before Dr. Kinley had his vision in this age? Or something to that effect, if you can remember that question, Dr. Light. But this was the lecture I was referring to where he said Dr. Yahweh always had people in every age. That he revealed himself to. So, anyway, uh, if anybody's got any questions or comments, feel free. Anybody can speak. Uh, I got a comment. Mm -hmm. Hi, Dr. Guy. How are you doing? 
Mm -hmm. uh, this lecture that you were listening to, I just happened to read it the other day, is November 1970, Satanic Spirits to Demons. Oh, excellent. Let me look for it. Is that is it the same length or is it the one the transcript longer? Well, uh, you stopped it on you stopped it on page ten. Okay, I didn't stop it. That's where the recording that we have to, Well, that's that's the recording, then, and it goes to page fourteen. Okay. Okay. Cool. Can you give me the name yeah. of it again? Uh, it's number sixteen somewhere, November nineteen seventy. November nineteen seventy. Huh. Two demons. Okay. I'm going to look for it right now. Thank you, Dr. Guy. I'm glad that we have that. Okay. Because I wish I would have known that before. Okay. Uh, anybody else? Let's see. Okay. Anybody else? You know, I, could, I could comment on that that you were talking about that there were others. Want me to? Sure. Don't do the dispensation and ages. Sure. And it's, uh, you mind speaking up a little bit? Yeah, I can tell you. Okay. Tell you about what he's talking about down through the dispensations and ages is what he's dealing with, and he's talking about those that receive the Holy Spirit. Uh, he runs through that line, and you have your chart on the path of the plan of salvation. He's pretty much doing the same thing that he always does. If you take a peek at that, you got a uh, comes next. I have to look at it. <laughs> I guess he mentioned those through the ages and dispensations. He talks about as you follow through that. He talks about Enoch, the seventh from Adam. You understand? Mm -hmm. Talk about him prophesies. He talks about. Abraham and King Melchizedek, you have that plate there. You talk about Noah. See, and he said that those men in those other ages that he revealed himself to in Moses and all the other prophets that he revealed himself in, he said they had the Holy Spirit, but it wasn't permanent. And that's what he's talking about when he talks about those men and the law of the prophets that he revealed himself to by a vision. See, and that's what he's talking about. And you say that goes all the way up to Pentecost. And then he talks about after they receive the Holy Spirit, the, you have the 120 in other room, and you have those 12, those 11 apostles, you understand? And that includes the Apostle Paul that would make 12. What he's dealing with, he's dealing with they would have the Holy Spirit. He would put the Holy Spirit in their hearts and minds, and that would be permanent until the end of the age. That's kind of what he's looking at when he's discussing that. Okay. And he probably went to Ephesians. I'm sorry to hear you went where? He said he probably went to Ephesians, you know, where he talks about in other ages, it was not revealed to them as it's revealed to the holy apostles in this present kingdom age. Because they say he would get in them, and then he would leave them after he spoke what he needed to say in them, and they would be just like another man. Okay, excellent. I'm sorry, I was finding that transcript. I think I got it. Okay. Right. You can continue, Dr. Dye. Oh, man, that's Pretty much all I want to say <laughs> on that. Story, I, I have a comment if nobody else wants to go. Just uh, Dr. Dyer just made me think of uh, uh, some of the things that we've come to learn in this school and then we forget over a period of time because um, we're just, there's so much to try to absorb and um, it's impossible. So what Yahweh does is takes events like this and rehearses them again in our mind. But we would have to realize for that question, was there always somebody that knew the truth in the creation? Well, we would have to understand that that is the case as Dr. Kenley points out, 
because if it were ever were not the case, then that would mean that the satanic spirit is in charge, and he's not. This is Yahweh's show and not the satanic spirit. So Yahweh always has to be present because it's that spirit that controls that negative spirit. It's the righteous spirit of Yahweh that controls that negative spirit. So Yahweh cannot appear or cannot ever not be present. See, when that satanic spirit is present. Because we know what he'll do. He'll just run rampant. And Yahweh gives him a leash like a wild dog to allow him to accomplish the things that he's accomplished. And even in his creation right to this current day. And Yahweh does that to show his power. That when he overcomes the satanic spirit, or when Yahweh overcomes this pandemic, you'll know that it was Yahweh himself that accomplished it, no man, and that the devil cannot drag you down to the depths of hell as long as you trust and realize that there is a savior who is Yahshua the Messiah. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Dr. Lewis. Can um, I come in again? Yeah. Because I got this, well, the, the transcript that I have is on page six, and you were talking about Dr. Kennedy. It says, uh, uh, I don't know if that's numbered the same way this one is. Yeah, it's not. Just... Now, here's why that is. There's never been no time that since the beginning of the age that Yahweh poured out his spirit out on everybody, he has. That that's his chosen vessels back there. And then nobody else had it but them. Moses and Enoch and Abraham and Melchizedek. So you know what those plates are, right? But he knocks on the he knocks on the chapters number two, Abraham and Melchizedek go on the in that's on the 40 plate chart too. And then you have Moses. Now listen. Now here comes another one now. He's trying to be something. He's that false. Now, what do people on the earth plane have to do? Now, you have to do this. He's given you at in this last age an opportunity together. Now, you you have an opportunity to be here. You come along. Now, you have to accept the spirit. If you don't do it since it's free and since he is a vessel doing the preaching, if you don't accept the way he preaches and you're going to accept the way the devil do it, then you just done lost your soul. Oh, you found it, huh? Yep. Yeah, so let one of them better readers read that. <laughs> I know you did fine. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. Excellent. Thank you, Dr. Guy. Uh, Dr. George Light, if you remember your question, you want to repeat it because I'm probably I probably butchered it. You may be unable to unmute. Uh, so go ahead. I hear somebody. Oh. Well. If you can't unmute, we'll move on. Are there any other questions or comments or about anything? It doesn't have to be about this lecture. Hello? Yep, there you are. There I are. I was trying to unmute. <laughs> <laughs> I was just typing you actually an answer to yours. The original question I was had was, did Dr. Kinley say? I, it wasn't that I doubted that somebody had the Holy Spirit. I was just wondering if Dr. Kinley had ever said it because it was such a long time between the disciples and Dr. Kinley. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering if he had ever just said it. Okay. You know what I mean? I never not believe somebody had the Holy Spirit in that right. length of time. I was just wondering if he had said it. That, right. That's... That was all. Okay. And, and this, this lecture confirms that there was always somebody present with the Holy Spirit, which I believed. The question only was, did Dr. Kinley say it? Right. That was all. I never saw it in print anywhere, so that's why I had that question. 
Okay, cool. Yeah, I didn't forget about your question either. I've been listening to lectures. Like, I know I heard him say something about this in one of these lectures, but I just found it this week. So, anyway. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks, George. Thank you, Dr. Dye, Dr. Lewis. Anybody, any, any, um, any other questions or comments? And real quick, this is the transcript. So Satanic Spirits to Demons, Dr. Dye has a, another copy that's numbered number 16, it's November, 7, November 1970. So this is the full thing. Apparently we, what we got was a side one, because this is how it starts. Yeah, now the thing most important in the world, this is how the recording you listen to starts. It ends at side two, so. I don't even know. It may be on SoundCloud. I haven't listened because she's added more. So I haven't listened to everyone. This is where the tape we listened to today ended right here. Now, here's how you get fooled with your finger right. So, Dory, could we, could we, could you read the rest of the transcript that's not included in the tape? Maybe go up a paragraph or two to pick up the last things Dr. Uh, Kennedy was talking about and just take it on down. Sure, sure. Laura, you want to read this? <laughs> Can you see it? I, I'll read it because you probably can't see it. All right, this is the last paragraph with Dr. Kimley that we heard on the tape. Yeah. Did you want me to? I can see it. It doesn't okay. matter. Yeah, go ahead. Where do you, which right point do you want me to start? Right. start okay. right. All right, Dr. Kimley. Now he deceived the whole world. Now watch. Right back here in the garden, that woman was deceived. And all of the posterity that come from that old serpent that old devil cast out in all the millions of satanic spirits. Now look in heaven. You got to move it over. Sorry. This is there. They were, yeah, I can see it there. They were called angels. And when they are cast out into the earth, they are demons. That's the reason why we get the drag on. Because in this blunt end of this thing, and another one's preaching and teaching something else. And another one's teaching something else. Seven major doctrines, seven major. And all of the rest of the little imps is all embodied right up in, into that, all embodied into one satanic spirit. Though they be many, it's all embodied in one, seven branches. And Yahshua, he, he seven is there too, which means complete and everything that's embodied within him. Now, in order to make that picture, he's got to take that man and put that man down there and then take that woman out of the man and take the woman and impregnate her here and let her be the mother of all living. You see what I mean? That's what you take the natural. Sorry, right, give me one second. I'm just trying to make it bigger. I can barely see it. All right, where were we at? <laughs> okay, sorry, Laura. Sorry, everyone. Okay. Uh, I just okay. Here we are. Here we are. Okay. This paragraph right here. All right. So, so and everything that's with embodied within him. Now, in order to make that picture, he's got to take that man and put that man down there and take that woman out of the man and take the woman and impregnate here and let her be the mother of all living. You see what I mean? That's why you take the natural things to look back at the spiritual things. That's what you got in Romans 1, 19 and 20. Is that right? Now them satanic spirits, a third part of them was cast out and cast down and that's called the devil and satan and his angels or his demons and all of them is embodied in satan or there's one dragnetic dra dragnetic spirit excuse me beast do you understand what i'm talking about all right read i simply said that the devil is satan is that right <clears throat> you see now he's got to you come back over here and read here about that old serpent being cast out over here in the third of Genesis. You know it's talking about that same one over there in Genesis. And he's just come right straight on down, right straight on down. 
Now, let me, I want to say this. Now, here's how you get fooled. Now, here's how you get fooled with your finger right on it in the Bible. That's the reason why I tell you this is not a Bible reading, scripture quoting contest. And if you notice that this particular nature of the devil and the temptation in the wilderness, I mean, out there with Yahshua was baptized. And when he went into the wilderness, say, Freddy, he put the scripture to him. The devil is not one to take up a whole lot of stuff. He put the scripture to him. He said, it's written. If you be the son, command these stones to be made bread for it's written. It's written, he shall give, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee. And if their hands shall they shall they bear thee up, at least at any time thy dash thy foot against a stone. That boy's going to be what's in the book. But you, one of them devils, come on and tell you anything, tell you that the Pope had plenitude of the power and he can put you in heaven and just done scared the living daylights out of you. And you're afraid to come out of their satanic body. And you're all crystallized and all balled up with it and go right on back. You're talking about going back to your grandparents. You go all the way back there, come down out of heaven. And now the time has come when he poured out his Holy Spirit. And there hasn't anybody got any excuse now. Now I wanna show you where they balled up at. That's what I tried to show you. Now, you listen at what I'm talking about. When you got the New Testament there, you got hit there. And now the birth of Jesus was on this wise. And you go on down and you see the thing that you hear. Circumcision, baptism. He goes to the Passover, goes and gets his lamb, and goes to the Passover. Now, you're reading there out on of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That's a biography. Now the devil out yonder told you that Jesus was setting up an example for them and that you should do as he did. Now, what he was doing was fulfilling, which he had instituted. And this is what you got. You got a record of him fulfilling Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And everything the apostles excuse me, and everything that the apostles said, they referred back there to the scriptures and showed you the fulfillment. It's written, Abraham had two sons. Every time, every time one comes up, he tells you that. But here's what I'm trying to say to you. The preacher's a devil. He's come up, say, look, I'm gonna buy, I'm going by the Bible. And he said, Jesus said, as often as you eat this bread, and drink this cup. We show forth his death and suffering till he come. He's got his finger right on it in the Bible. He got it that Jesus was baptized. He got his finger on it. Now you can't dispute that. You see the point? And anybody can read it. You see what I'm talking about? And he said, and now look, I'm following the Bible. And the Pope, he's out there and all running around saying mass everywhere saying mass and looking for him to come on the sermon and all that kind of awful particular about the linen cloth and everything. And he's so precious. And he's so precious blood of Yahshua, the Messiah. And he changes grape juice into the blood of Jesus Christ. Now that's a stupendous miracle. Think so? And then you, you're stupid enough to sit up there and believe him. And now look and listen, get this straight now. He told them that that was the last time he was, that was the last supper. They won't do that way no more. Now, all the way before he was born. Now, what you got in here is a biography of him fulfilling. Now you come along and you say that. See the devil with his finger on it too says, Jesus said for us to do this. Now that was in this dispensation. That was in this world. That was in this age. Now you take the natural things. That's exactly what it is. This is the natural to show the spiritual. So now in, when his flesh was hanging out this cross, I mean that physical man is out of it. Then you come over in this age where the Holy Spirit is poured out. Now then, here comes the devil. 
He's telling you, Jesus said, as often as you eat this bread and drink of this cup, you show forth his death and suffering. Jesus was baptized and he resurrected from there, said, go and baptize. And he's preaching a doctrine like that. Whereas all the natural that was given back there was a schoolmaster to bring you up. So do you know what's in the spirit? It's blotted out and nailed to the cross. The natural thing is nailed to the cross. You too. And now we're walking in the, in the heavenly fashion. We've borne the image of the earthly. Now we're walking in the spirit. Now, that bread that you eat, when you go home tonight and eat it, and then it's masticated and goes on down into the esophagus and goes on down into the intestinal tract and it's mas <clears throat> excuse me, masticated and digested and assimilated and then passes through the abdomen abdominal tract, excuse me, on into the bloodstream. <clears throat> I give you physical steak, is that right? And just as, and the blood points to the life, the life of the flesh in the blood. Now listen, that and the breath of life. Now you got that, the breath of life. Now that's the flesh. Now that's not what we're after. That strengthens your physical body and it don't do no good whatsoever when it comes to the spiritual. So now the bread that we have to give you now is that real bread, which is the spirit. And if you eat that, or you partake of that, you will never die. Now, we're not talking about the physical body. Do you understand? And that's how the devil fools us, reading in the Bible. They said, Jesus instituted. He's a liar. He can't for, say institute and fulfill all at the same time. The thing's got to be instituted back here and fulfilled. You got the Bible here. Now, the Roman Catholics and Protestants both do that. Well, now, here's what I'm going to say. Man don't know over here. Now, here, excuse me. Man don't know over here. Now, here's what I'm going to say. You got all these devils out here. You got them all out here. Here's, he's cast out of heaven in popes and preachers and popes and cardinals and bishops and whatnot and reverence and so forth and so on. Now here you set the congregation. Now you have got to hear the truth of it and the truth will make you free. It will deliver you from everything natural, even deliver you from this physical body that you might have an incorporeal. And yes, indeed, with the natural body. And when you get that straightened out, then you can see that angel. My preacher cried over there talking. I love preaching the word of God and Jesus said all that kind of demonic stuff. You see what I'm talking about? Stomping and wiping sweat. I'm preaching the gospel, Jesus said. As often as you eat this bread and drink of this cup, you show forth my death and suffering till I come. Not realizing that he went to the grave, come right back out and went right straight back up there. And that last feast was seven days, excuse me. And that feast was seven days, the feast of unleavened bread, right straight back up there. And here's where he went. Do you know, told Thomas, you know, he was up there and Thomas didn't want to believe the resurrection from the dead. Now, when you say as often as you eat and drink, you show forth his death and suffering till he come, you are preaching that he's dead and buried and hasn't ever resurrected from the dead. All twisted up, all messed up, not only on the names, but everything else, the doctrine. Do you see through what I'm talking about? All right, Laura, I'll give you a break. I'll read the rest. Now we feel, this is what I wanted to say about Dr. Joe Heisey. Now I've been complaining about it. I want you to know it. We don't want no papal mess and regalia and stuff indicating that I'm so-and-so-and-so. We don't want no long hair. Paul said, long hair is a disgrace or a shame to a man. Now somebody said, well, he wasn't talking about the spirit, talking about the spirit. Yes, he is. Long hair was given to a woman. And then somebody come back and you know, talking about 
the vow of the Nazarene and them folks over there yonder, they let their hair grow out long. I know all about it. I know more about it than you do, but that don't spell nothing. And it don't count a damn thing. You don't know nothing with your hair all grown out. Did I read that right? You don't know nothing with your hair all grown out. Why do you want to, why do you, why do you want to try to mock somebody and be like somebody else? Why don't you be like Yahweh? You see what I'm talking about? And that's why I said, quit trying to play hippie and hippie and all that kind of stuff. Get on down to business. Now, when they go to wearing robes all over America and everywhere, I'll conform to that. I'll get me a robe to wear. If everybody don't wear it, I ain't going to wear it. I'm going to wear pants and a suit and I'm going to cut my hair off. I don't want no lice trap on top of my head. I'm trying to tell you straight about it and conform. Now, when I want to wear mine like that, then all the rest of you do it. If all, you all done cut yours, I'm going to cut mine's off too. Somebody says, well, I don't care what you say. I won't do it. I'm going to, I'm going to do what suits myself. I got the Holy Spirit. This is holy that I'm trying to tell you about. The reason why Yahshua the Messiah didn't shave his head is the vow of the Nazarite. He had, in order, to, in order to fulfill the scriptures, he had to have a beard. But I want to tell you, I want to say this. When John, John saw him in the spirit, had hair like lamb's wool. You never seen a lamb's hair grow all down, grow all down shaggy and all like that, like you do on a goat. Now, there's a difference between the flesh and the spirit. Now, so now he didn't shave or he didn't cut off, cut his hair off because he had that. Now, look, he wasn't bound by no vow, no Nazarene, but he's going to fulfill the whole thing. You see the point? But since he wasn't from Nazareth, he's going to fulfill everything, all of them vows. So then he let his hair grow until his vow was fulfilled. And then he cut it off. He cut it off. He cut it off. Paul, when he went to Jerusalem, blank. When he went to Jerusalem, up there to preach to them Jews that was so devout and holding to the law, you know what he did? Shaved his head and went up there, took that, shaved his head so that they would think that he was, was a Nazarene. Shaved his head like Bishop Shorts got his shaved. Why, yes, I'm just, I'm not trying to make no diabolical remark about anybody. I'm just trying to show you how people are deceived by these satanic spirits clothed with their regalia and their robes and their dress and all these outward signs and don't know a thing about God nor the and we don't want you to be like that we want you to conform so that they can't tell you about your dress can't say nothing about me and I'll even buy you a coat so that you can conform and we can all be the same and conform somebody might just somebody going down the street with long hair and say well that's a hippie or they might say well, that's, if that happens to be a black man, say, well, that's a black panther or, or that's a black Muslim. Get on away from that junk. I don't want nobody branding me like that. You see what I mean? Student body applauses. So that is the end of that. Thank you, Dr. Dye, for, uh, I'm just thankful to you, Ashley. You, you were reading the same thing, so. And it appears that it did start at the same place to take this, so. Uh, any questions or? comments if not we're going to call on speakers i have a question um at the end there when he was talking about conform can mm. someone like well that last whole paragraph basically mm -hmm. um um is he saying like conform so no one like automatically you know like disregards you because you look a certain way or so you can, you know, possibly, you know, talk to them and make them comfortable and talk about the gospel. Right. He's talking about representing the gospel out here. So we've we heard that growing up in this gospel, we heard that a lot. <laughs> and it was hard to do. But he's talking about remember, you you know how people say, uh, you know, you see some, a kid when you was a kid and you see a kid acting crazy or acting bad. And they said, boy, he ain't got no home training. It's a reflection on your parents, you know, when you are. So what he's telling us is don't be out here just doing everything and acting any kind of way, because that's what then you turn around and say, it's another lecture where he says that you turn around and say, I'll go down there to that class. And that's what people are seeing. 
You know, they're looking at you. You out here running around like back in the day when we used to, me and my cousins used to do music. And we just be, you know, you making music, rap music, everybody smoking, drinking, we doing all this. And then somehow one night we got on a conversation about the gospel. Everybody smoking and drinking. But our friends, who's Jehovah Witness, boy, they called us, like, y'all telling us the truth. You smoking like me. You drinking like me. And that was the time y'all always showed me. You don't be out here doing all this other stuff. You can't do it in front of them because they're going to use that to judge judge you and judge the gospel by that. So that's what he's saying, you know. Is don't be out here being crazy because you representing this gospel. There is another one of these 45 where he says that a little more clear and uh, a little more forcefully. He's like, if you can't, he said, you, you out here telling people you go to this class, he said, you behave yourself. And he said, if you can't behave yourself, quit telling people you go to this class. And he, that's exactly what he said. So th this this is just uh, him saying that same thing in a different way to me. If anybody else has got anything on that. Well, I just wanted to add and say that. See, what Dr. Kimley, he's not trying to tell you to not be yourself or to mirror everyone else. But what he's warning us against is being a distraction to someone here in this gospel. See, now, if I'm a... If I'm a uh, um, a hippie for lack of a better term, or, or if I'm a Rastafarian, see, and I'm walking around with long hair and I'm smoking marijuana and stuff like that, see, and I invite you to come and smoke some marijuana and you say, well, I don't do that. Say, well, okay, I'm going to smoke when I'm telling you about it. Then I'm a distraction to what I'm trying to tell you. Because now what you're looking at, you're looking at me and my mannerism, you're listening to my voice, I'm cussing, I'm cursing, I'm saying a bunch of street talk and stuff and so it's just a distraction to the person you're trying to get the gospel over to so you want to talk to them in a manner in a manner in such a way that it's distinctive very distinctive what you are saying even though they may not understand the spirituality or the realization of what you're saying but you want to be able to present yourself that there's no distraction they're listening to what you're saying and they can envision in their mind what you're saying. Now, if you're sitting there dressed like a bum and you're talking about preaching the gospel, guess what they're going to envision you? They're going to envision you looking like a bum standing in the pulpit because that's all they know. And that just is not going to gel with what they perceive righteousness to be. So you're just trying to present yourself so that you're not a distraction and that you don't turn a person off because you want to be a 2021 person. Just be yourself. Be like everyone else that you see out here or maintain your norms. Now, what you do when you at home, help yourself. You know, if you want to have Rastafarian hair and do whatever, do what else. And if not good for you, Josh will take that away from you too. So just it's just he don't want you to be a distraction. Not trying to tell you to be like a, a particular race or a particular nationality or a particular type of person. So, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lewis. Yeah, doc, Dr. Lewis, Dorian Lewis, I, I got a question. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, at the end of uh, the tape, there, he, he asked a question about, uh, he says, uh, do you know the answer to that question? I think he was talking about a number or something. I, I heard him say, uh -huh. do you know yeah, this part right here. Okay. Well, uh, let me read it. Yeah, it kind of kind of lost me there. Yeah. Okay. Let me see. I'll start here. He was reading in Revelations. Right. Um, so the reader is reading in Revelation. And there was a war in heaven, Dr. Kimley. Now look, there was a war in heaven. There was a war in heaven. All right, read, reader. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, Dr. Kimley. Michael and his angels fought, reader. And the dragon fought and his angels, Dr. Kimley. Now you see, now here's what I want you to see now. If you could just once get it through your thick skull that them satanic spirits, angelic spirits were first in heaven. And did you notice that his tail drew a third part of the stars of heaven? Mm -hmm. Now, who do you know that can give you any, well, let's, let's say a good guess about how many stars are up there in the universe, up there in the sky. It's innumerable. And his tail drew the third part of the stars from heaven. Is that right? A third part of them now. Now, why a third? I want you to know why a third. Do you know? Well, then somebody will have to tell you if you don't know. Three thirds equals a whole. 
Is that almost right? It's just like you divide. It's just like you draw something on the board and then you divide it up into three parts. Here's one, here's one part. This is two parts and this is three. Now, this is what happened. This is all, this part is drawn out. There's a third of it. Is that right? Student body, right. His tail drew a third part of the stars from heaven. All this part. Then you only have two parts left. That's a whole lot of it. Wasn't, wasn't, wasn't it. Uh, let me see. Mm -hmm. Let me see, Dr. Kinley. And then what, Doc? And the great dragon was cast out, Dr. Kinley. And the great dragon was cast out. I think that's the part you're talking about. That is the part. I, I got it. I, I got it okay. now. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, thank, thanks, Dr. Lewis. I appreciate that. Man. Thank you, Dr. Atkins. <laughs> All right. All right. Anybody uh, else? Well, I did want to comment on that part about Joe Icy. I could have commented on that, too, the two-thirds. Mm -hmm. Now, that's just that uh, when you talk about those angels being cast out of heaven, that's in the angelic creation back there. Mm -hmm. And he made stars without number, so you'll never tell how many stars that is. You can't count them. He says there's enough demons to go around in this world. Right. So he said we talk about Mary Magdalene having seven of them. Right. See, so he said there's never going to be. They got more of them that was cast out of heaven. So put it this way: if a third part is tail to a per third part of the stars of heaven, you had Adam and Eve in the garden, and satanic spirit influenced them. So there's a whole lot of them to go around. And you can also talk about them pigs that uh, them herd of swines where he talked to the demons and they asked him to go in the herd of swines and they ran off into the sea. Mm -hmm. You understood? So there's always more satanic spirits around as those demonic angels than you can count. There's a newable company in heaven and there's a newable of angels in heaven and there's a newable company in earth. So you're never going to be short on that. And he referenced that. Now, back there, dealing with when he was talking about Joe Heisey, I just want to make a comment on that. Now, there is a, I think it's a history tape. It's on VHS, and they had that. And maybe I think they talked about Joe Heisey. He was at one of those conventions. I can't tell you exactly which one it was. Now, in that convention, he said that he came in, and he was sitting on the edge of the, of the stage, and he was right. sitting there. And I guess he had some kind of revelation or something. It might right. be also in your history pamphlet. Yeah, we watched now, that video. That was the uh, history of the Arnie Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yes. Now, now there was a now back there. What happened later on? We had a dean's meeting in California. Me and my wife just happened to be there, and we saw Joe Heisey, and he had a secretary with him or something. And what he had on? Now we talk about your apostasy plate. When you look at your apostasy plate there, you see the priest with his robe on. You understand that you know your Baptist ministers, sometimes they have their robe on. Now what he had, maybe I say a couple other things that you should be aware of. If you're talking about this is 1970, you understand? Now, and th if this is 1970, in the 1960s, you have what we call the Vietnam War. The Vietnam War, on, and then, and that's like back in my generation when I was a teenager or just in high school or coming out of high school, you had the Black Panther Party and the Civil Rights Movement going on. And they had the time when we all wore fro. <laughs> if you understand what I'm saying, we are, the, the style was long hair. Mm. And the hippies, now they had the communions, the commun communes and the hippies had the long hair. Everybody had long hair, you understand? So when we were at the Dean's meeting, uh, Joe Heisey showed up. Now, it was by invitations to deans and presidents. I can't remember when, exactly when that was. And we were out there. Now, he was outside of the deans meeting because it was restricted to uh, deans and officers out there. And he had on this long robe. And he had on this hat. And he had a full beard. Now, what they said, now, what he was doing that for, now, when he put that on, now, and he wore it around, just like you see back there during the time of Moses and the children of Israel, and what you see in these illustrations here, you understand, that allowed him access to everything, you know, to churches and, and special events, and that's kind of what he was, he was looking at. So, so, but then, now, traditionally, we were told in the Institute to dress in business attire. Now, that's still a standard 
that's in the IDMR. They want you to put on a suit and tie. You know, now Doc Kelly may say he don't care if you wear the tie or not. They wanted you to dress appropriately when we're in the classroom. And most of us would dress that way when we were in the classroom. I had one of the uh, younger, let me see, it was one of, uh, he must have been about, he would graduate from high school. It had not been too long ago, maybe five years ago. And he invited me to, uh, you know, to a, a, where he was having a party for his graduation out on the beach. And you know what he said? He said he had never seen me in anything other than a suit. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the appropriate dress that, that they wanted us to wear in school in that business attire. They didn't want us to go in with long robes or anything. Now, this and Doc Kelly also talks about that in the sense that these robes, when you look at here, you have these Jews, the Protestants, and the Catholics. And even if you go to the Baptist church here, you find out a lot of them would put on these choir robes and these crosses and these tassels and they preach to the congregation. Now, in this present kingdom time, now there's something else we might want to look at, the Old Testament, New Testament chart under the cardinal ordinances. Okay, one second. And it'll give you an occasion. It's a, it's a, and you, we're just going to kind of look at the finger that's pointing to Yahshua, the Messiah. It's the Old Testament, New Testament chart. I got it up. It'll show up in a minute. Okay, yeah. You see this? You see where it says cardinal ordinances? Yes, yeah, right there. Now, you see the sleeve. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you got cufflinks on it or not. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's drawn that way. In particular, one of the, one of the students uh, said that was Dr. Kinley's finger pointing there with a cufflink, with a cufflink on <laughs> You understand, but he told us to dress in that in, in in business attire, just like the dean was saying. You know, so when we present this this doctrine of this gospel. Now, even in that, I don't know if I should go any farther with that. Even in this that I'm talking about, uh, there are other things about people being on YouTube. And you know, sometimes I had been when they are having regular classes. There was a guy that said. And I heard this comment because I listened to something that one of the tapes that were from Los Angeles and one of the guys were talking about, he made the statement about people being on YouTube and not having the appropriate dress or the dress that the class said that you should present yourself in class. Now, they had a question about this for quite some time. Could they relax the dress clothes, the dress code? And they said, no. So you have that emphasis. So. The founder said, when well, now if everybody, now all of us that were teenagers back in the 60s and the 70s, before they got into the disco era, you know, and my day, we used to have long hair, you know, mm -hmm. and all those things to reflect that generation, if you understand them. Of, of those kids. Now that's that that is that generation that they call hippies. Mm -hmm. You understand? So now that's what I want to say about that. Now that's why I'm saying you can pick up the term about your high seat. Now there are other things in here that was vitally important if you could track this through this tape because he talked about a lot of things and he explained a lot of things. If you know what I'm saying. I don't know if you want me to go on with this uh or let somebody else comment. So Uh, you can decide. So if he was talking about these satanic spirits being cast out of heaven, and that's what he's dealing with. Now, in your chart on the pattern of plan of salvation in the lower part of that chart, you know, when we talk about after the crucifixion, burial, resurrection, and ascension of Yahshua, the Messiah, and then you go on the day of Pentecost, and you probably illustrated that earlier as he was going through this tape. You have that woman clothed in the sun, and you have the moon under her feet. That's in the, uh, you have to go to the chart on the pattern of the plan of salvation. Uh, 
and you have to look at the lower part of that chart that he's explaining, talking about the yes. So you have two things going on there. On the day of Pentecost in the holy place, you have this woman clothed in the sun and the moon under her feet, and he reflected that back in the realm of eternity on the sixth day of the creation that he's referring to. And then on the persecution plate, yes. So you have Pentecost, holy place. You have persecution, holy place. You should bring that up and enlarge it if it's at all possible. Because this is kind of now he said this vision that he was talking about was drawn out and you you begin to see that what he's talking about. Can you enlarge the holy place on a, a persecution? Is it possible for you to make it bigger? That yes, that's good. Mm -hmm. That works. Yeah, so you got Pentecost, you got this woman clothed in the sun, moon under her feet. So he's making reference to back there talking about the days of creation he's talking about yahweh elohim the son being plural and then he's talking about then he gets down to the man now you have the man there and you have the you had that woman see the first man adam you had that woman in him so he talks about the rib and the womb that was taken from the man to create the woman you understand and then you that's like down here the woman's clothed in the sun now pentecost you put the woman back in the sun the true sun is not the sun that surrounded that it was yahweh elohim that brought about everything in the creation and they get that sun mixed up so when you look at this talking about the next place you see this dragon standing before the woman now what he says is that so is the woman that was up the the man, that's Eve, that was of Adam. Now you got the man of the woman, that's that's Yahshua being born of the woman. And you have this dragon having seven heads and ten horns, and he's standing before the woman to devour her child as soon as it's born. So we're talking about, now, and she's paying to be delivered. If we're talking about we're the bride of Yahshua, the Messiah received the Holy Spirit, he sent those apostles out there to teach or preach the gospel. And that's what they were doing of the good news now what happens is now you have the persecution of those people so down at the bottom you move it up just a little bit so you can see up so we can see the court round about two you see that dragon he's calling that pagan rome and you see that dragon and you see his tails having those seven stars you understand in his tail you also have that on the daniel's chart and you have that with the serpent that has those tails around there and, it, and those are those demons. Now, Apostle Paul is typical of that. He's out there persecuting a the woman and what they're delivering. It says the gospel priests begin at Jerusalem. And that's the persecution that caused them to leave. Now, that's what he's trying to stop. As soon as they received the Holy Spirit and they were sent out to the Jews first and then to the Gentiles. You understand? And that's what you're looking at. Now, even when you go on over to the apostasy plate, you have principally, you have the same principle thing. You have those, and what we would say about that, that tail, that that tail that the serpent tails. So we used to go through and say T-E-L-L -L or T-A-L-E or T-A-I-L mm -hmm. is the story, is the tale that the the Pope and others are telling. So when you get to apostasy, you talk about sex, creed, vain philosophers, Babylon or Christian doom, false science, theoretical opinions and religious that. Now what the story is they're telling is, Yahshua is telling the story about them being that he came to fulfill the law and the prophets. See, now the things that they're telling you is that he came to institute and set up a Christian example. And you're looking at that. Now, he puts those people there in the holy place. You have the Jews, you have the Protestants, and you have the Catholics, and then you have all the others. You understand all the other various scientists and religions and merchants and highlights out there. So that's typical of what's going on in the holy place. So that's what you're kind of looking at. Now, he's telling the story, and he's bringing all these things together in this transcript. And he's also applying them to each age and dispensation. So when you look at this chart as a whole, you understand, now you can shrink that chart a little bit if you want to, to the size that we can see it all. That chart of the pattern, the plan of salvation, swing it back to the small size, please. And we'll just take a quick look at what he's kind of looking at. See, 
because he's pretty consistent about now if this is the child on the pattern or plan of salvation what you have in those eight circles you have typically those ages and dispensations now all the things down below that has to fit in those ages and dispensation because he had to do something quick he brought this chart and he put it that way now they vary from they vary from chart to chart now there are some things that i've noticed about this chart maybe i shouldn't comment on that looks really good but there are some things that i've noticed in here that's slightly different but i'm just going to tell you now when you look at this or you look at from if you just give it a quick think about it from the transgression to the flood you understand is what age post uh post uh, anti diluvian sorry yes right that's what it is exactly you still need to okay i see the sign i have five minutes five yeah, minutes yes there. sir yes sir okay i still want to look at the uh child on pattern of plan salvation so so that's what you have and from the abrahamic promise which is a dispensational thing so you have uh and you have something in between that when he talks about he'll talk about moses going back he'll talk about noah and he'll talk about abraham and he'll talk about enoch the seventh from adam and peter would say all those men holy men of yahweh speak as they were moved by the holy spirit now that's what Peter says in Peter. But what you said, then you run this from the dispensation is the Abrahamic male chest dispensation all the way down. It runs out. And then you have Moses. You understand now he's chosen those two men. You have the Mosaic law. Now the Mosaic law runs all the way down to Yahshua's Messiah fulfilling it. Mm -hmm. See, that's what that runs to. Yes, at the fulfillment. And the present kingdom age begins with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. So you have the, yes, that's where it begins. And that runs all the way down to, as we say, the physical creation to eschatology. So that's pretty much from cosmogony to eschatology. Now, all that fits in the ages of dispensation. Now, what you have, now what we're talking about, we're talking about the law. We're talking about the prophets. We're talking about the fulfillment. We're talking about the biography, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And we're talking about those were the days that they're writing about when you in those 33 and a half years that Yahshua, the Messiah, was fulfilling the law and the prophets from Moses. So that law ran, now it said it ran all the way down from Moses and Yahshua, the Messiah, was born under the law, subject to the law to redeem them that were under the law. Now we're in the, now in this present kingdom age, we must worship Yahweh in spirit and truth. Now that's when he's talking about on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit was universally poured out. So we're talking about on the Jews first, and they preached to the Jews and Jews only, you understand, for those seven years. And then he poured it out on the, on the uh, Cornelius house, on the Gentiles, and it's still going on today. But as he said, he gave power also to those that receive the Holy Spirit. And he also gave power to those that have the satanic spirit of that apostasy play that you have down there. So when he goes through these things, he's, he's pretty much explaining the same thing. He's running these plays through the dispensation and ages. Now, if you don't know what age you're in, because that's vitally important what's going on in this present kingdom age or this world, then you're just going to have to be deceived by the satanic spirit mm -hmm. and he's saying that the satanic spirit as we get down to apostasy what they've done as we say they've restored cardinal ordinances you understand that's what they've done and that's what they're preaching they're preaching the things that were done on the dispensation of the law or from the time that moses was spoke the ordinance from mount sinai till the time that Yahshua came in those 33 and a half years if you see what I'm saying, to fulfill the law in the prophets. And that's where they're looking at. So in the sense, after the Messiah ascended into the heaven, they figure that he hadn't came back yet. And that's going on. They're looking for the coming of the Messiah to come back and set up the kingdom on earth. Well, that's not the case because we're already in a new world, which is called the present kingdom age. And the next age is going to be an age of immortality. And that's what we're looking at. 
Now, when you look at these plates that he's drawn out, and he say they're all by the same pattern, they're all threefold, they're Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua, and everything has to be repeated all the way through the dispensation and ages. So I was talking to one of my, I think it was my uh, daughter-in-law, and I was telling her, looking at this, and I know that you young people are more familiar with computers than we are. If you're familiar with a spreadsheet, you understand? Now you can take this, this is pretty much like a spreadsheet because you have these principles, line upon line, precept upon precept. You have it by the pattern that you have on that plate. You understand you have the altar of sin sacrifice, that's the bloodline. You have the labor, that's the water line. It runs all the way through from beginning to the end. You have the door, you see, or the holy place where the priest was anointed, that's the spirit line. You have the holy place, which is the 40. And then you have the ascension in the most holy place. Now that runs through each and every one of those plates. In the most holy place, you always got to have some type of king or ruler all the way through there. Right. So that lines up, it lines, it goes all the way across and it goes up and down all the way through. You understand? So he deals with all these historical events. So the so chart series number two is him drawing out the same thing that he's talking about, and they're all divided the same way in the ages and dispensations. So you have to bring in the Moses chart to talk about the days of creation. Mm -hmm. And then that's where he talks about you confuse about what son, the true son that lighted every man is Yahweh Elohim, the archetype pattern temple. He transformed into this thoroughly furnished intangible tabernacle that he's going to have the children of Israel in the wilderness pitch. And then he's going to go through those days of creation by the pattern of the tabernacle. And they're all going to be threefold. Okay, Doc. I'll stop there. Thank you, Dr. I really appreciate that. I uh, just got something for this last five minutes we got to get through. Um, so we're going to pause. We're going to... Um, Forego the lectures, the uh, recordings for a time. Hopefully uh, get some transcripts built up. Uh, again, thank you, Dr. Guy, for finding that transcript. So if anybody knows of other ones that don't have the new transcripts, but they're actually old lectures, let me know and we'll play some of those. And uh, uh, Dr. Clarissa Pickens had a question she posted in the chat. So I'm wondering, uh, we don't have time tonight, but uh, maybe next Tuesday, if somebody wants to go into that, um it's about um she says she do you mind if i read it clarissa <laughs> well, you posted it to everybody so no go ahead <laughs> all right so she said uh she left class about 10 15 years ago and what was being taught was we inherited one of those satanic spirits cast down from heaven she was wondering did this transcript confirm that so uh i know that's a big topic so maybe uh next tuesday you guys want to go into that Rhonda. <laughs> or uh anyone else i'm just i'm just trying to put around on the spot yes very good topic okay so uh i'm asking dr ronda brazil <laughs> to maybe go into that because i've heard her going to it before it was uh pretty good also so, next uh, next session dory let's try to go into that uh one third from heaven and show what that process is in there. And Rhonda goes through it very well. So she can cover that too next week. <laughs> yeah, I work for Rhonda now. All right, cool. And Dr. Uh, Dr. Dye as well, because he covered that one third as well too. So, all right, we got a topic for next Tuesday, which will be, uh, uh, are we, did, did we inherit one of those ten spirits cast down from heaven? And also the one third the Satan, Satan's tail drawing one third of the angels in heaven. All right. So I will turn it over to the moderator. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Lewis. And uh, thank you for, uh, for all your participants, uh, all the questions, and Dr. Dye, thank you for uh, your dissertation as well. This uh, brings conclusion to our class this evening. Uh, once again, we hold classes on Zoom. Um, Tuesdays and Thursdays from 6.30 to 8.30 uh, p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and on Sunday from 11.30 to 1.30 uh, Eastern Standard Time as well. We'll now have doxology that's taken from the last uh, books of Jude, and we all stand in our hearts and minds.
Now to him that is able to keep you from falling and to present your soul faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our savior, through Yahshua, the Messiah, our sovereign, belongs glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and for all times. Let us all say, hallelujah. 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 hallelujah.